Alright everybody, welcome back to the A Simulations channel. Today we are going to be doing a traffic pattern tutorial. So this is going to go along with all my uh, ATC videos that I've made previously. This is going to be how to actually fly a traffic pattern when uh, departing an airport and arriving an airport. So let's go ahead and get started. That's awkward. Alrighty everybody, welcome into the sim. We're here in the 172 Skyhawk uh, in my custom system 172 cockpit here. We're gonna go master switch on. Parking brake is set. Fuel shuttle valves coming on. Fuel selector is gonna go to both. Mixtures all the way to idle. Gust lock, I'm gonna move that. Stow it. Start up here, so start. Advance the mixture. It's a good start. Avionics coming on. You can see our Garmin's gonna start booting up here. Arm our ELT, check our enunciators, our enunciators like we'll set our altimeter and our hitting bug. And I'm not gonna be flying on Batsim for this one just because the purpose is uh, practicing traffic patterns. So we're just gonna kind of do that ourselves. So here we'll go, okay, okay. And then let the Garmin continue booting up there. We'll go ahead and release our brakes. Give us a little bit of throttle. All right. If you're interested in building a simulator like this for yourself, I have a link in the description below to my website where I have build plans available. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and taxi down here. Sim looks absolutely gorgeous. We have a nice, I think that was a uh, Pilatus over there. The clouds, of course, look amazing. It's a little rainy. It's not windy though, um, but clouds and uh, rain and everything are going to look great, so while we taxi, we can go ahead and put our flaps down one notch. Taxi here at throttle about idle. So this is going to be a traffic pattern just at a simple airport, so we're going to be operating under VFR conditions. Uh, we're not going to do any complicated approaches or anything like that, or it'll just be a VFR pattern. Uh, in a future tutorial though, I'll start walking through how to do some ILS and IFR flying in this sim as well, because I do have those instruments here all set up for that, but today we're just going to focus on keeping our eyes outside and just flying visual cues. We're going to make left-hand traffic at this airport, uh, so that way I can use this uh, side window here, and we can actually use that for some of our visuals. Turn off our taxi light, turn on our strobe light and landing light. And before takeoff checklist, flaps are set, throttle is going to be set, prop is good, flaps, uh, everything. So we are good to go to take off. I'm going to turn on the panel lighting here just so it shows up a little bit better on camera. Let's dim it just a little bit. And then we're going to turn on to the runway here. All right, runway 18. Wind is calm. Go full throttle. Maintain our center line here. There's 40. Our speed's coming alive. 50, 60, and then we'll gently rotate up. A little bit of a crosswind. All right, so I turned off the lights there. They were doing something funky, but. We are still flying runway heading, and this is what's called upwind. So we took off into a headwind, so we're now heading, continuing to head into that wind, and that's why it's called upwind. From there, we're going to enter into a left-hand turn, standard rate turn, and uh, we're going to do this for 90 degrees, and that's going to put us on crosswind. And crosswind is because we are going to be in a crosswind, so that headwind is now going to be coming from our right side, and it's going to be pushing us. And I'm climbing here at about 70. And we're gonna keep that turn coming until we're about 90 degrees off the runway. So there we go, I can level off. I see the runway just off there, 90 degrees. I can now start another turn. Uh, crosswind is very short. Another, do this, another standard rate turn here. Getting close to pattern altitude. And on downwind, I'll explain what pattern altitude is. So now, we're gonna keep this turn coming. So now we're flying with the wind. So we took off into a headwind, now we turned 180 degrees and we're flying back into the wind. Uh, or sorry, 
uh, with the wind. So the wind's pushing us, pushing us downwind, just like downstream of the river. That's how it's, uh, that's where the, uh, where it's coming from there. So now we are on downwind. This is where you can exit or enter the pattern 45 degrees. So if I wanted to depart, I would announce that I'm departing and then make a 45 degree turn and depart the traffic pattern. You can also depart straight out on a crosswind, stuff like that. You just announce those things. Uh, if I was coming into land, I would also enter uh, midpoint of the runway, so right about where I am now, looking out the window here, and at a 45 degree angle to the downwind, and that's what would allow me to then enter the traffic pattern under view of our conditions. Uh, pattern altitude is going to be the runway elevation plus a thousand feet, and that's unless it's otherwise specified. So, in this case, uh, I'm a little bit high for this airport, so I can descend a little bit. Um, but it's the idea is that when you look out on your wing, the runway is going to cut about halfway through uh, your wing uh, uh, spar. There, uh, it's kind of hard to see and describe, but it's you can kind of get another bit of a visual sight picture off of that. So, but the numbers are going to be a thousand feet above uh, the airport elevation. So we are now a beam the airport numbers. So uh, I can bring my power to idle. We're going to start a gentle descent. And if you're flying a more high performance aircraft and you need more room, you can of course extend your downwind, give yourself a lot more room. But uh, this is for a Cessna 172. So we're going to start our descent at about 500 feet a minute or so and I'm going to be waiting until the airport's about 45 degrees behind the wing and then we're going to turn another 90 degrees and that's going to put us on base and base is uh, going to be again like the crosswind except this time it's off our left wing and we'll see the runway right outside our left window here so we can now go ahead and start our turn again this will be another uh, standard rate turn 90 degrees to put us on base. I'm going to add some power in. Okay, we'll level off here. So now we're on base. You can see the runway right out there. This is a very squared off turn. We can also look here. Since our runway was 180, we should be heading due west, which we are. Ignore this compass, it's slightly off. Um, I have to do some calibration stuff to it. All right, I'm gonna go another notch of flaps. I'm gonna keep descent coming. We can see the pappy lights now. I'm not gonna start fully paying attention to those yet. Now we're gonna turn again, uh, 90 degrees. And this is your turn to final, which is much harder to um, kind of figure out when to make that turn. And so now we've rounded out, we're on final. We're back aligned right with the runway here. I'm a little bit low, so I'm gonna add some power. Uh, I'm not going to climb, I'm just going to level off a little bit. That'll allow me to re-intercept that glide path. So there I go. Um, red over white, so two red, two white. Um, and red over white means you're all right. Red over red, you're dead, or you're too low. White over white, uh, you're way too high. So in this case, we're right on the glide slope. I'm going to go one more notch of flaps. The runway is going to be made, that's why I added that. And now I'm going to descend below the glide slope. Uh, just so I can go ahead and land. So, power's all the way to idle. We're going to end our indoor flare here and then have a nice touchdown. I wasn't aiming for the touchdown zone in this case just because uh, the airport's uh, glide slope here is slightly off in the sim. It's a little bit too steep. So, we're going to go flaps up to 10 degrees, add some more throttle, and we're going to continue our roll here. And while we're on the ground, we can look here. So about uh, 700 feet, we're going to call 700 feet airport elevation. And go ahead and rotate upwind. And if we did a go round, we just do a go around straight onto upwind. So we wouldn't do, of course, a landing or anything like that. We just continue along this, and now it's you know, going around on upwind, whatever. All right, we're going to pitch up for a nice climb. I want to climb at about 70 or so. Climbing out on upwind. Once you're 500 feet above ground, that's when you can start your turn to base, or sorry, to crosswind. So, uh, in our case, you can wait just a little bit longer. About, I'd say, 1,300 feet, so I'm going to start my turn. Okay. 
Now I'm going to turn crosswind. And standard traffic pattern is going to be left traffic unless it's otherwise specified. So you can look in the uh, airport directory or look at NOTAMs and those will tell you what the traffic pattern is. Alright, and now we're going to be heading due east. I can level off. I see the airport off to my side there. Keep climbing. Crosswind. Alright, now we're going to do another turn to downwind. And this time I'm going to show exiting the traffic pattern and then we'll come around and then enter it and then uh, do a landing. So. Alright, rounded out here. Now we just hit downwind right at pattern elevation. So the idea is when you hit downwind you're at your pattern altitude. So in this case we're at uh, 1700 feet heading due north which is where we need to be because our uh, uh, airport's uh, runway is 180 and 36, so we should be heading at 360, which we are. I'm going to put the flaps up since we're going to depart the pattern. We can accelerate a little bit, cruising speed. Alright, so now we're about midpoint of the runway, so we're going to make a 45 degree turn. And now we would be able to depart the pattern and go fly wherever. So the uh, idea behind this is it is a, uh, especially at uncontrolled airports, it's a well-organized way of handling traffic. So um, you always know where people are going to be. And when you're making these calls on the radio, turning crosswind, turning downwind, turning base, turning final, uh, you know exactly where that uh, pilot and aircraft is. All right, so we're turning here. Uh, now this airport actually has published uh, at VFR entry point. So there's some fish ponds right down there and that's the VFR entry point. So I'm going to fly over that, make uh, almost 180 degree turn and that's going to put me on my 45 degree entry to downwind. And right now I'm still a little bit higher than pattern altitude. You don't want to be at pattern altitude necessarily until you get to the pattern. So um, in this case I'm about 500 feet above it. And there we are, right over those ponds. Um, it's very hard, to, I can barely see them down there. So we're gonna go ahead and start turning. I'm gonna start slowing up the aircraft as we get ready to enter it, and we're gonna start descending. So there we go, see the airport right there? And I'm gonna aim basically right towards the center of the airport, that's my 45 degree entry point. We can look also on our map here and see that we are indeed on a 45 degree entry. I'm going to keep flying straight here. And now I'm descending to pattern altitude. This is a beautiful rainbow, by the way. Microsoft Flight Simulator has spectacular graphics. And I'm going to keep descending, keep pulling the power back. I want to be about 100, uh, around 100 knots indicated. For downwind, that's just kind of a Cessna thing, so that's I'm written down. All right, that's about where I want to be for my downwind. Uh, this the road here is what you can use for downwind. So one reason this airport's great for practicing traffic patterns is you can utilize the roads kind of as a parallel. And depending on how far they're spaced out, you can just fly over kind of this road here, and that puts you right where you need to be for your traffic pattern. So. I'm over the road, I can see we, uh, runway is about halfway up the wing there, and I can see I'm on a nice traffic pattern. Still a little bit high, so I'm going to keep descending. And when I entered the traffic pattern there, on that 45 degree, I would have also announced, of course, on ATC, uh, or in this case it's Unicom, that I am in fact uh, entering on the 45. You can also, one popular method is to overfly the airport, and then do a fisheye, um, basically kind of what we did. Um, except we would have flown over the airport before making that 180 degree turn. And we would have done that about, usually you do it about a thousand feet higher than the pattern altitude. Um, and that'll allow you to look down, look at the windsock, figure out which way you want to land and all that sort of stuff. So now we're at pattern altitude. I beam the numbers. So I'm going to bring the power back, start my descent, and I'm going to drop one notch of flaps. I'm going to keep coming down. That looks good. Good. I'm going to start my turn about 45 degrees behind the wings where the airport is. I have just a little bit of power. 
usually want to descend with a little power in, about maybe 1500 RPM is pretty good. I think a lot of pilots use that. Alright, rolling out here. There's Crosswind. And when we're done here, we'll go look at a debrief on Volanta, which is what I use for all my flight debrief. We can look at our traffic pattern and see how we did. I'm going to add a little power in just because I'm a little bit farther out this time. This is going to give me a little more time to get stabilized, and this time I'm going to target specifically the touchdown zone. I'm still at one notch of flaps, which is good. All right, I'm starting to intercept the glide slope there. And I'm going to make my turn here. Final, a little low once again. So there we are on final. Another notch of flaps is going to come in. And this is where you got to get yourself stabilized. So in this case, I'm a little bit fast. So I'm going to trim the airplane up just a little bit. Here's the glide slope. A little bumpy just because of the weather I've set to. We're still rather fast. Now we're, we have plenty of time to bleed off that speed from where we are, so that's fine. 60, there's 55, that's where I want to be. Keep coming down. I'm looking at the runway touchdown zone there, and that's where I want to land. I'm going to start sinking just a little bit. I'm going to go full flaps. I'm going to go power to idle, and I'm going to enter into my flare there and touchdown right in the touchdown zone there so the idea is you want to flare you want to enter into your round out just before your touchdown zone so that way uh, your little float as you do your flare will be right where you want it so there we go we can put our flaps up I'm gonna exit the runway right here and I would announce uh, once I'm past uh, runway hold short line up here I'd announce that I'm clear of the runway So there we go, clear the runway, landing light's coming off, taxi light's coming on, strobe light is coming off, go ahead and turn into our parking spot here, right back where we started, there we go, set, hold my brakes, I'm going to set the parking brake, turn off the taxi light, uh, avionics is going to come off, you see the entire radio stack shut down, flaps are up, uh, turn off our nav light, Alrighty everybody, so we just landed and now we're in our debrief. So here's Volanta all pulled up and so we can see uh, our flight path. So it also is going to look a little bit weird just because of altitudes and all that. Um, but we can see how we have fairly squared pattern. First one was a little squirrely just because uh, there was some wind stuff that happened. I didn't correct very well on that. But we can see that we went, uh, entered and exited the pattern at 45 right about middle of the airport. And then this is where we did the fish ponds right down here, entered on the 45, had a nice downwind. Our base was pretty consistent and then of course final. Um, this is Volanta, so one really cool thing, if you go to statistics, you can get some information uh, on like fuel, distance, flight time, all of that. So but the one really cool thing is you can actually see your landing rate. So 30 feet per minute, that's not bad at all. And we touched down right smack dab where we want to be, which is 55 knots. So that was pretty cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing and leaving a like. It really helps me. My goal is a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. And so I'm gonna try and keep increasing the production quality of my videos and also some of the quantity and uh, different subjects and stuff that I can do. So I hope you guys subscribe. Catch you guys next time. See ya.